introduce myself and you can introduce yourself. This is April from uh, Blood Rock Media and I'm speaking with... This is Paul Barnes from Van Red. I'm the lead singer. Awesome. So um, you guys were recently here in Detroit, which is where I'm located. And you guys were with Lace, uh, touring with Lacey Sturm, right? Yes, we're touring with Lacey Sturm right now. We actually just finished the tour about two days ago in Atlanta. Um, we've got three radio rock shows that we're doing in Florida and, and uh, South Carolina. Um, but we're just taking a small break right now. It's four days, um, and then uh, we'll be hitting it back for those radio festivals. How did the tour with Lacey go? It's good. It was really good. We had uh, it was Lacey, Righteous Vendetta, and another opening band called Messer. Um, everything was great. All I mean, all the shows have been just really good, and um, all the fans have been great out there. Um, I, did we play? Oh, we played Flint. We yeah. played the last time we played Detroit was uh, it was with Ten Years, right? We played at the uh, what was that venue called? Saint was it Andrews Hall or something? Yep. There's Saint yeah. Andrews, yep, in Detroit. Yeah, yeah it's a famous, it's a famous place actually. Yep. They gave us socks. <laughs> <laughs> that that was nice of them. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. <laughs> did, did you enjoy? Did you enjoy the crowd in Detroit? Yes, crowd in Detroit was good. Um, like Michigan, every time we play in Michigan, it's great. All the, the the fans up there, I guess, because it's so cold sometimes. Yep, it's they, they have nothing else to do but come out to rock shows. So. <laughs> yeah, the the local scene suffers a bit, but you know the the touring bands have quite a bit of success. The local scene here is a little choppy because you know Detroit has three basically metro areas there's macomb county wayne county and oakland county and people from oakland county don't really want to travel all the way to wayne county and you know because everything's spread out so when people say detroit you actually played in detroit for the most part people refer to detroit as those three counties and most people don't actually get to play in detroit so yeah so, so in detroit go through a lot of changes yeah, I mean it's coming. I mean it's coming up. It's still a little rough, but it's you know they're tur they're turning it around. It's not okay. it's not easy in the steel belt. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, turning around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you guys are from Nashville. You don't uh, get hit with this lovely freezing cold weather in April, where we're on second well, winter. Surprisingly, we do get kind. Of, it gets kind of cold. Um, like yesterday, it was down in the thirty, or actually this morning it was thirty four degrees. Okay. I went, I went out running this morning and I had to put on a hat and a scarf. And I was like, this is kind of crazy. But now it's 70 degrees. Like this morning it was 34. Okay. Now it's 70. Yeah, that's, that's insanity. That's a huge that's a huge jump. 40 degrees in, you know, 12 yeah. hours. That's crazy. Well, Not even 12 hours. Well, the trees don't know what to do either. Yeah. I, I can imagine. Three bloom? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I have my, my, my bulbs are starting to come up out of the ground. I'm like, yeah, you're just going to die from frost. Because we're on second winter here in uh, Michigan. <laughs> it was uh, 20. It's all the posts that people were posting about uh, the different winters and summers and falls because of the crazy weather. Yeah. We're we just played Dallas uh, about a week and a half ago. And it was 30 degrees in Dallas. Where's this global warming we've been talking about? <laughs> I have a change, remember? <laughs> that's, I know. Where, where's See, that's the, the, the end all of just like, you know, anything can happen. <laughs> well, that's true. They, they call it global warming, but it's really just the, the um, like the North Pole is warming up, but everything else is colder. Is exactly. that what it is? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, now yeah. that we know that, I, I understand Michigan weather because it's, it's pretty <laughs> cold here. It's, I don't know, maybe 29, and we had some snow this morning, so, yeah, yeah I'm over it. I'm ready to move south. We got snow this year. We got, like, a little, maybe got one week's worth, and that was about it. D d does everything kind of shut down when you guys get snow? I think it was shut down. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do we do? What, what is this white stuff? <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they don't know what to do. <laughs> Trucks that have salt and... I like the North. Right. Um, Although, we did go up to Minneapolis, play a show in Minneapolis, and uh, we got stuck on an on-ramp. We were doing a show there in Minneapolis, and we were like, uh, I think we were six minutes from our hotel. Oh, 
Oh, geez. Get stuck at an on ramp because the on ramp is like one of those ones that goes uphill as it goes around the corner. <laughs> and the bus was sliding off. The oh! <laughs> You're like, no black ice! <laughs> it was pretty bad. We, uh, we had to get this massive truck, uh, um, tow truck to pull us out. Oh. It, was, it was the kind of tow truck that had like these claws that dig into the ground. Oh. Because when it first started to try and pull us, it was pulling itself towards us because it was trying to pull us out. But we're like, you know, 50 foot long with a trailer. Right. And with a bunch of gear in it on an angle with a slope. And so. <laughs> it wasn't going well. <laughs> Truck had to, the truck had to pull out this little extra, yeah, the claw, it's got, I think it's got front claws and back claws in order for it to dig in and, like, pull us out. That, that. It actually did. And then we got up on the side of the hill, and the guy's like, that'll be $500. And I'm like, jeez. We're in a band, we're not wealthy. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. People don't realize, yeah, you're like, you guys are rich, right? And like, no, nah, no, nah, we spend pretty much all of our money when we're on tour. Yeah. Look, make money off of is maybe like a little bit of from merch and like extracurricular like things outside of that but that's about it yeah that's what i always tell people always when you go to show you have to buy merch because if it's a touring band even though it's a, you know maybe a, a larger band they're really not making that much money there's not much well, money in music anymore yeah see the thing is people are gonna understand it's like the larger you get which i'm not like yeah, I love where I'm, you know, I love the music that we do, and I love that you know we are able to do this. I feel you know, lucky to be able to go out there and play music with people. It's like, but once you get to a certain level, it's like you have to you know, hold that standard. And so there's so much money that goes into you know, holding up that standard. It's like getting a better merch, you know, getting a better, uh, I mean, not merch guy, but getting better front of house guy, getting lighting guy that's you know it's like you want to always upgrade and make things better and put on a better show for people and, you know we're just three guys from a small little town in pennsylvania about a thousand people and so we we traveled out to nashville in 2002 and thought we'd give it a shot and you know we've we've kind of made it under the radar before people stopped buying records <laughs> well, CD, you know. i mean so what made what drew you guys to to nashville well, both boys, um, Nashville was not that big of a city um, about 16 years ago. Okay. There's like three different towns you can go to. You can go to L.A., New York, or Nashville, really. Right. Um, L.A. is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> South Point. But it's it's a mess. It's, it's, the traffic's ridiculous. And, you know, we're small town boys. So we're, just, we're just like, we didn't want to be too shell-shocked, I think. Okay. <laughs> So we went to Nashville and uh, we met up some, some cool dudes. Uh, Jason Rao, he's in record management right now. But he was our first, or one of our guitar players. <clears throat> and then uh, we had a drummer, um, but we've gone through like four drummers now. Le the new guy with us is named Dan Johnson. He used to be with Love and Death from Head's Band. Okay. And uh, so he's been with us um, for about four years. And uh, but yeah, so Nashville. That's, that's, that's where it's at. Nashville's grown, man. It's I'm glad to be here for sure um, because it's a it's it's a fast growing town. It's, it's a, a lot of people are moving here too. Like uh, Justin Timberlake, I think, just moved about 20 minutes down the road from me. You're gonna you're gonna be buddies with uh, JB. Yeah, yeah, I remember JB. <laughs> You'll be a believer. He did eat at the same restaurant. I mean, what he wasn't there at the time. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be a, you can get a believer. You can become a believer. <laughs> Oh, Although, yeah. I, did, I did like his last album, not going to lie. It was catchy. <laughs> uh, did I say Justin Bieber? Yes. I meant Justin Timberlake. Oh, right. that's, well, see, that's even more impressive. <laughs> JT, you know, with Jessica Biel. Yep. Yeah, you know, JT's pretty awesome, though. I, I like him a lot. Yeah, I do like JT. Yep. So, good. Um, crazy. Yep, so you guys are hitting some uh, festivals later in the summer. Um, have you guys played, like, the festival circuit, you know, previously? Uh, yeah, we, um, we try to do, um, we'll probably hit a lot more festivals next year, uh, just because the record came out late this past year in October. And so um, we want to make sure that we hit the festivals when um, the record's hitting pretty hard. Right now it's doing well. We're on, um, right now our single's gone, the song gone. Yep. 
and so we just we just started putting that out the shares and we've got about over two million views on YouTube right now so wow, that's awesome. got a story about that song I think it's it's the most popular song on Spotify too so for us so we're pretty excited about it um, that's why we're hitting these radio stations right now pretty hard to um, get that song boosted so we do make up a pretty good tour maybe next year or the following or this um, fall yeah the uh, the big the, uh, the weekend uh, festivals in like you know rock on the range louder than life all, all those ones that'd be great to see you guys there we're getting all those next year for sure that, um, I think I can't remember rock on the range is usually this uh, Columbus Ohio. Yeah, no, when it happens oh it's uh, like the third week of, of May third week of May that's right yeah it's it's usually pretty predictable oh, it's coming up soon yeah yeah uh, this is the first year we're not we're not going we decided to take a break we, we've been the last four or five years and we decided to take a break um, just it, it seems as though the it, it'd be great to see you guys on the lineup because it seems like every two years the lineup is basically the same so it would be it would great it'd be great to get some like new you know newer bands you know on on the festival tours not the ones we've seen every you know every other year sure i mean i think there's some great i mean some great bands that are coming up there they're, they're going to be hitting the headline spots i think maybe changing that up see uh, papa roach is doing really really well really like their new record and um they're touring with uh, nothing more right now yeah escape the fate and that tour seems to be doing really well so that's good for them you know yeah i'm glad i'm glad, I'm glad to see that they're doing a little resurgence yeah I always like that band. You know what? The band that I would love to see make a huge resurgence was Seven Dust. Well, Michigan loves Seven Dust. They sell out here quick. Like within within a day, tickets sell out here. Michigan loves Seven Dust. I would love to see them like in arenas. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. They, they deserve it. I mean, they're um, they're super badass. They do. They do. They do deserve it. We were just talking about that with um, our front of house guy. His name's Boz. And uh, he's done. Mi he's mixed with them. He's mixed with Cedar. He's mixed with Rick and Benjamin. All of them, different bands and stuff. And but uh, you know, he you can't think if you um, look around at all the different bands. Like every single band that I know, just like Seven Dust. Seven Dust is awesome. Yeah. You can't think of any band that would say that Seven Dust is not. Other than them saying like we don't want to close, <laughs> we don't want to play before me. You know that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're they're awesome. I think I saw them the first time maybe eleven years ago uh, at a little theater about fifteen minutes from our house. I saw them with um, it might have been with ten years actually, maybe. Yeah, no, we uh, back in two thousand seven. It was us. Um, I can't remember the other bands. They don't play anymore. There's these band. There's this one band that dressed up like they had um, white coats and they had tinfoil hats. <laughs> Wonder why that didn't last. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, I kind of like the. You know, I, I personally like when people kind of do like that. You know, that strange thing stuff on stage where you know they just got creative. What, what would you call it? Like they they just found kind of like a a stage persona, I guess. Yeah, you know, just something as a little thing. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's fun. We just saw uh, Galactic Empire. Uh, do you know who that is? Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh! Do you like Star Wars? Are you a Star Wars fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So they they basically took like uh, made metal versions of all the Star Wars songs, and <laughs> they they dress up in their own made Star Wars Star Star Wars esque. Uh, uh, costumes and they just get up there and jam no vocals just all instrumental and it's like super heavy and I mean just really really cool that's pretty cool yeah and they design their own costumes it, yeah they're very cool they uh, tra they were traveling yeah, cool. they got there that's awesome yeah I mean it, I mean it was a big show they they were uh, touring with Max Sabbath uh, uh, do you know who Max Sabbath is no it's like he dresses like Mc Ronald McDonald and covers uh it's like uh. the style of black sabbath but it's 
Oh, because he's in Max Sabbath, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. and so it's like all the the Hamburglar and Grimace, all. <laughs> so it, it was it was a little it was it was fun. It was a fun show, but I mean, Galactic Empire was really really good. You should check them out for sure. Oh yeah, that's fun. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they they basically started on YouTube, um, and they were surprised that you know their video had you know a couple million views, and they were like. I guess we should make an album. <laughs> so they they did, and I mean they're touring now, and you know, pretty successful. So yeah, very cool, very cool. So who's your, if, you know, if you could headline for any, I mean, if you could have a headliner, somebody you opened up for, who would your dream band be to open up for? Muse. Muse. That's awesome, and it's so it's so different, but it's awesome. Oh, uh, dude, I feel like we're kind of different. Because we don't, we, we have some like harder songs, but we also have a variety. Like, I feel like all of our records change too. Like, we don't always try to do like the same thing. We try to change it up and do something different. Always push ourselves yep. a little bit. <clears throat> Especially with this new record, we, we kind of changed it up a little bit more. Had like more like um, kind of beat driven. Mm -hmm. um, some a lot of lower like beats, almost like kind of rap. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit into it. Yeah, it's cool. Like it's got some of the lower stuff. What it, um, what it, what it kind of inspired that that little bit funky, a little bit more. Oh, probably die ant word. <laughs> you, are, you fan, are you a fan? <laughs> they're so they're so insane, but I love them too. I, <laughs> see, yeah, I should, you guys should tour with them. How odd would that be? <laughs> be complete contrast to you guys. <laughs> just, I'll just tour with them, and then I'll just turn on the the, the camera. Yep. <laughs> I <can> tell those. <laughs> I mean, you, you guys are kind of known as like you know a Christian Christian band, and obviously Lacey Sturm is also a Christian. Do you find yourself, you know, do you find yourself being like just labeled that and and trying to get out of that, you know, that label, and so people see you more than just a Christian band, or do you do you not care? Uh, I mean, at this point in our career, I mean, it's twelve years in, like I don't really care. What people want to label us as. Yeah. I know who I am. And, you know, I feel like our music speaks for itself. It's, you know, we never went out there to um, just have play music for Christians. Like, right. We always want to play music for everybody. We felt we feel like our music is for everybody. Oh, I, I completely agree. It's not for all really human beings. For all human beings, we all have struggles. We deal with the same things. And I think our message is about redemption it's about finding the light at the end of the tunnel you know and for us it was you know finding jesus in our life but for other people it doesn't have to be that it's fine it's like we understand that you know we don't go to shows and ram down and throw bibles at people and stuff <laughs> why not and, <laughs> ah, that could be our thing it could see you could find you guys could find your uh, little stage thing that you do. You just throw many Bibles at people. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we just go out there with, and we try to put on as much passion and energy into our shows, and you know we just talk about life and things that we deal with. Like the last record of Beauty and Rage was about finding beauty in the struggle of, you know, whatever you're facing. We went through as a band. We went through a really really dark time. Especially our guitar player went through a really dark time, deep time in his life, and, and so it was a very that record was a big therapy session for us. Just kind of getting some of those inner demons out and just talking stuff out with each other. And then this new record, Gone, was about like just you know leaving a legacy. Like, what's your legacy going to be like when you are gone? You know, is, you, is just the air that you breathe is your only legacy? Like, you, know, you see all these different artists like. You know, Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park killing himself and like like what's this world coming to? Like right. was it really that bad? And so we wrote that song still alive. It's like you know, what's it all for? Why are we here? There's a lot of the a lot of questions about what's the meaning of life. You know, and that, that song hit us hard because we're like, man, even though we've gone through a lot of dark things in our lives with a beauty and rage, <clears throat> you know, we're still here. We're still alive. And we get a lot of fans that, that come to our shows, and we do this little acoustic experience in the bus where we'll invite um, 
or fans can buy a ticket and they get on the bus. And so we do um, 10 fans and they'll get on the bus and we, they can ask us any questions. We'll play an acoustic song for them, but we get a lot of fans that come on the bus and we have one in particular, um, her name's Grace, and uh, she's dealing with cancer and it's terminal cancer. Right. And so she's been dealing with it for a long time. And she came on the bus just recently. She's wearing her shirt and says, still alive. She's like, I'm still here. <laughs> fighting. Exactly. You know? All of us have to fight and struggle and, you know, wake up the next day and do, do it all over again. You know, we have to fail. We have to succeed. We have to do all of those things. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of what our message is. It's like, you know, whatever your struggle is, what do you deal with? It's like, What's your legacy going to be? Are you going to be a changer for good? You know, or are you going to be a changer for bad or evil in this world? Especially like what's going on right. in this world. How, you know, craziness that's going on. School shootings and stab, you know, like London stabbings and acid being thrown on people's faces. And, I mean, I'm sure that's been happening for years upon years, but it's like with the media and everything, you see it a lot more now. I think it's social media. I mean, that's what I kind of tell everybody is that we we think that all of these things are, you know, more prevalent now, but it's really not. It's We're in a society that everything is instant gratification. Your news is instant. Everything is instant. When we were growing up, it was you had to wait until the 5 o'clock news for, to, to find out something happened, and you wouldn't find out that, you know, so-and-so, you know, maybe somebody got beat up at school, that's not going to be in the newspaper. That's not going to be a breaking story on the news. Whereas now you have instant instant news because people who are there are filming it and, you know, posting it even before the news is there. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it just, I think that while I do think that there's a lot of negative things going on in the world, I don't necessarily think things are worse. I think that we just have the information instantaneously now instead of having to wait to get yeah. that information. I mean... Actual killings and stuff with guns has actually gone down since right. the 1990s. Right. There's more guns in the United States than there's ever been. Yes. <laughs> I, I, per, I personally like guns. <laughs> They're fun. I mean, I agree with you. My dad, I mean, I was 100 when I was growing up. My dad's got a bunch of guns, and, and my uh, brother's got guns. And I don't have guns yet, but I, I can see myself getting guns. Like, I'm not against it or anything. I'm, right. I'm a for pro gun person. You're pro gun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's responsible gun owners. Right. Re responsible gun owners, right? I mean, that's. Well, I, think, well, I think most gun owners are responsible. Yes. It's the ones who aren't who give guns, the, uh, you know, I guess the stigma of being a gun owner that, you know, people think that there's all these problems, but it's really just the individual. Whatever there's, whenever there's a problem, it's usually people that commit suicide. Yes. There's a mental issue. Right. There's a mental issue with almost all of those shooters. Right. Yeah. It's because they somehow get a hold of a gun, however. It's it's mental issues. And then I think all of them except for one didn't have a father. Right. I mean there's, there's a lot of things it's like it's with broken homes and broken families that, that definitely deal a mental blow to a lot of people, I would think. Oh, for sure. sure. You know, and we had a, a incident here recently where there was a threat and the police asked the student, you know, why did you do this? And he said, well, I was being picked on. And he's just answering the questions like no pressure. And I'm like, if his parents like just simply asked him questions of what was going on, maybe it wouldn't have gotten to this point. Like we almost don't, you know, talk to our kids about what's going on, what they're feeling. And. Yeah. You know, we we take for I guess we take for granted that they'll come to us, but that's not necessarily true. You know, a lot of us don't even know we wouldn't notice if our kids, you know, demeanor changed or you know they seemed extra sad or you know isolated. You know, a lot of people wouldn't notice that. It's like I can have quickly because yeah, uh, you know a lot of a lot of hormones and stuff in that age, you know, teenagers, and just feeling like they're worthless that you know can can change quickly. You know, like they can feel worthless quickly. They get dumped, or, you know, or anything just happens. Right. They're getting picked on at school and then you know, well, they try to cover it up. They're emotionally fragile. 
you know, it's not, it's not like us who we've all, we, as adults, we've been through ups and downs and we've learned how to deal with, you know, rejection and failure. These are kids that haven't learned all those life lessons yet. So yeah. being picked on and bullied is, you know, you know it's <laughs> devastating. And, and, you know, when people always say that we were bullied as kids too, and, and I agree with that to a point, but bullying is a little bit different now because it's, they can, you know, when p kids are bullied, it's not just in school. These, they can do it on social media. And so you have people from around, you know, the world telling you that you're a piece of crap. Whereas, you know, us, you just had the one kid in school who pushed you down. <laughs> you know? I like, feel like no kid should be on social media until they're like past 18 or since then, or 21. I don't know. completely agree. My, our daughter is 11. It's not good for them. It's like, there's, there's no use. No. There's no use for it. It's all bad. Like, it's all right. negative. <laughs> how, how old are your kids? Uh, I have a nine-year-old, seven-year-old, and a two-year-old. Okay, so the nine-year-old you're you're looking at in the next couple of years, the beg to be on some sort of social media. My daughter's eleven. Um. Oh. Yes. So my daughter's eleven, and she begs for Facebook or Instagram, and every single time there's like a girl who's lured by some adult man from so, uh, social media, I show her. I'm like, this is why you cannot have it. I'm yeah. like, there are adults who pretend to be kids and they're not and yeah. it's dangerous and it doesn't yeah. matter if I can monitor it it doesn't matter if you know you have it private it's better to not put yourself in that situation if you want to see something on social media you can I'll search for it on mine and you can look at it <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah definitely scary for sure because I, I woke up this morning and there's my son's on YouTube watching Minecraft videos yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, but I just don't know what they're what they could be looking at and stuff. So try to protect them as much as I possibly can by putting whatever parental settings. But you know, you don't know if that's gonna catch everything. Exactly. It's. I mean, yeah. It's. It is sensitive. He's a sensitive kid. He's. So I got a little autism in him, okay. and so he doesn't understand social cues. And not to the tenth nth degree, but um, he's usually talking at people. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> just talks at people. I like this and I like this. Yep. Yeah. Everybody can take. Yeah. Well, I mean, he'll, he'll, you know, I'm sure he'll he'll start. Even though he's a little bit autistic, I'm, I'm sure he'll start as he's maturing. He'll start understanding a little a little bit more. He has actually. He's uh he's matured a lot this past <laughs> year. Hey. That's my two year old. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, I have my uh, dogs back here. I thought for sure they'd start barking during the interview at some point. <laughs> I looked at you when she left. <laughs> yeah, my, my dogs are uh, little jerks, these little dash hounds. <laughs> you just need to couch. You pull the couch in my ear. Uh huh. <laughs> Very important conversation. <laughs> <laughs> So how do you, I mean, how do you kind of juggle family and, and, and tour, you know, the band, the band thing? I'm sure that's, it, it's rough. So how do you, how do you do that? Yeah, that's, the, that's actually probably the hardest thing is being away from family for sure. Um, like thank, thankfully we have technology like with FaceTime and all that. And that helps a lot, but I mean, it only works if you have two willing, you know, if you're willing and the participant is willing. <laughs> Got on FaceTime this tour. We're around for about two months, and I got on FaceTime, and my two-year-old was like, "No, Daddy." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, done with you. Any of the I'm I'm sure it's tough. I mean, not seeing you know, other than through a phone or you know, a, a camera, seeing your dad, you know, in in your kids. Obviously, you don't have that physical. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> You don't have that physical interaction. Anna. Hi. 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 How are you? Oh, that's pretty cool. What is that? A gear? Yeah. That's those connect. Oh, very cool. Yeah, a nine year old is really big enough. Nice. You hungry? I would show you mine, but they'll start barking. <laughs> They're little jerks. I have two little dash hounds. Oh, yeah. 
Frodo Wagons and Sam Wise. Yeah, this is a Labrador. Uh, uh, Very cute. Very we need to have a shed. Yeah, that, that's a nice feature. Our little our, uh, piebald uh, dash on she sheds, but our red one doesn't. So it's weird. That's very cool. Yeah, like, um, <clears throat> like I said, we were gone for two months, but in between, I will, I'll fly out. Okay. And if we have any breaks. Try not to go longer than two and a half weeks. We made it to three weeks. And then I flew home. And we just will like do whatever we can to get together as much as possible. So I spend a lot of money. So we're like, yeah, you guys are rock stars. The other guys have kids too. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> are are your are do you, do you see your kids having like the the music gene as well? Are they are they musical? Oh yeah, yeah this little guy you can match pitch pretty well. Awesome. My oldest though, the nine year old, he's in chorus and stuff. But like we went to this thing yesterday and they sang a couple songs for like uh, the board of directors from the school. Okay. And he just stood there and was just like, <laughs> very shy, but he likes it. Yeah. Being a part of it, but he won't, he'll like barely sing or do anything. But he just likes to be there. He just doesn't like the, he maybe just doesn't like the audience. Yeah. Like, he'll sing by himself, and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> like the attention. That, that's awesome. This guy, I never knew. love you. <laughs> Hey, buddy. <laughs> he, he's a rock star in training. Yes, he is. Oh, he can scream already too. I can, I, I can tell. He's got, he's got a set of lungs. <laughs> kids, kids are fun. Yes. Do, so when you, when you tour, do you try to make like, kids kind of like all ages shows so that way you can kind of take over. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I don't hate it when it's not a show. Because, you know, we're not out there just to play to the older crowd. We want younger fans. Right. Build new fans. Yeah, that's the future. And, yeah, and then and then you have, you know, you have families that want to come out to the show. Right. And find babysitters. Right. It costs so much more money for them. And, you know, they want to bring their kids out, too. Yeah. So their kids are introducing their parents. Yeah. Come on out. Please let me go to the show. <laughs> hey, seen enough show. Sorry, that just makes me like ah, eat it. I, yeah, I love I love taking my daughter to shows. I mean, just like to watch her, you know, her eyes light up when she hears like a song that she that she really likes, and you know, to introduce her friends to you know new music too. I, I you know I love it. Yeah, we'll get we'll get uh, couples. They'll bring their baby and stuff to the show. That's awesome. They'll bring their baby to the show. They've had them on the bus. We've had three year olds on the bus before for acoustic experiences. And like, what's your favorite song? And they're like, they picked the heaviest song that we've ever made. Like, Damage! That's my favorite song. <laughs> and you're, like, you're like, yes! <laughs> it's funny thing is, usually the guys are like, they'll pick the softest song. What's your favorite song? Pieces. And the girls are like, feed the machine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. At uh, Rock on the Range uh, two years ago, uh, that punch was they weren't uh, the headliner. They were just before the headliner, and uh, they, they bring a bunch of kids on stage. That's kind of their thing. They bring a bunch of kids on there, and uh, Ivan Ivan gets on the the microphone, and he's like, you know, talking about how he loves kids, and he proceeds to start singing. A song that's like, I think it's like burn and effort burn, but he's like, when he's looking at the kid, he's like just mouthing the words. But then when he's looking at the crowd, he's actually saying the words. I'm like, you know, the kids can still hear you, and they're like two feet from you. And uh, there's one little girl at the end, about three, four years old, and she's singing all, like every lyric, and I'm like, that's not appropriate. <laughs> like, out of all the songs you choose, to sing, like, oh. All the all the songs you choose to bring the kids on stage is that one the one you choose. <laughs> it was, we just played Daddy, a national show. Daddy, Daddy. Oh, what's up? Awesome. All right, one second. I just got back from 
that's cool. <laughs> we'll wrap up in a second so you can get, get to being dad. Um, yeah. You can play a show in Nashville. Yeah, we just play a show in Nashville, so we brought our kids up on stage to throw out pigs and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they love that. That's and then my uh, my oldest, he's he's got sensory. He doesn't like yep. sensory. He doesn't like cold or hot. And and so the national show was ridiculously hot. So uh, I, of course, I wore a wet a white t shirt, and it was just soaked so. completely. And so Kale runs. Uh, my son runs to the backstage to give me a hug, and he sees me and he wants to give me a hug. He puts his face right here on us. Oh. <laughs> immediately just goes, <laughs> <laughs> Gross. But typically, I mean, before, beforehand, he would, uh, he would, like, he would yell and scream, like, ah, he didn't, didn't, wouldn't like it. But this time he went to go find his mom and, and put his face on her to show her how sweaty I was. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's awesome that he's kind of, you know, he's kind of embracing it and, you know, kind of coming into his own and, I yeah. guess, you know, developing into a, a young man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see that, for sure. How old was he when he was uh, diagnosed? Um, it was uh, last year, actually. Okay. We, kind of, we didn't know for sure because he's, he's also gifted. Right. Um, profoundly gifted kid. Like, he's really smart. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Is it breaking in? <laughs> how about I like? Hello. How are you? You're a cutie. Hello. Oh, you're showing your armpit. That's a nice armpit. <laughs> yeah, Anna. <laughs> it's at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> she's we, we we put the dog in her her uh I think I don't want her room and she barks for like two hours but she didn't even wake up. Oh. Maybe just, I just take the blanket and throw it in my head. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> no, it's too early. That that must be nice. To be able to listen to that. talking to you and uh, hopefully we'll get out to one of these uh, festivals that is, that's closer to Michigan. I see you guys are in Ohio so that's not yeah. too far. And, uh, catch you guys next time you're in uh, Michigan. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, April. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.